button would help. On the on switch. Hey, hi everyone. Does I was tasked. We were tasked with this great idea to talk about the future of libraries. Woohoo! Mine's working. Is your working? The future of libraries is this conversation that we're having right now. This is a conversation. It's it starting is. now. <laughs> There's a prize in this presentation, but it's not five dollars and it's not ten dollars. It's cooler than that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, but it is. It's something for that you can put your ideas in. So you have a thing. I'm Amy Vecchione. I am a web and emerging tech librarian at Boise State Albertson's Library. I am Dina Brown, and I am also a librarian at the Albertson's Library. My background's in fine art and photography. I've also worked in public and academic libraries. Um, I'm also a small business owner. My husband and I run an art studio out of our house. People think that that's kind of a crazy combination, libraries and fine art, but I think they go together beautifully because art is all about telling a story, and hey, libraries are full of stories, and both of those have to do with problem solving as well. So we're gonna start this off by asking you, I know when you were in Brian Bannon's talk earlier, a lot of you said the first thing you thought of was books, right? Okay, so this is what I think of. I want you guys to read this. Who knows who said this? If you can guess who said this, I've got a prize for you. Raise your hand if you, or even if you just want to guess. Take a stab at it. I really didn't realize that librarians were, you know, such a dangerous group. They're, they are subversive. No, Abby but Hoffman, that's a great guess. That's a great guess, but it's not right, sorry. They are subversive. You think they're just sitting there at the desk all quiet and everything, but they're like plotting the revolution, man. I wouldn't mess with them. No guesses? No one knows? Uh, anyone? Not even anyone? all the librarians in the audience right now? Come on, guys. Did I hear it? Not Vonnegut. Nope. Asma. Nope, more oh. recent. Did anyone Google it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoever Googles it first gets our prize. We'll hang on to our prize. User experience notebook. Find yeah. us after our talk. All about how you make good decisions when you're working in a library. Exactly. All right, who's Googling it? <laughs> <laughs> let me know when you're there. One of the librarians has Jump up and down, and let us know when you figure it out. So, like Brian, yeah, who said that? All right, All right. You get a prize and you, are you a librarian by any chance? You're an honorary one today, now dude. Now you are. <laughs> <laughs> so long ago, like 4,000 years ago, libraries were the birthplace of ideas. It's where everybody came together to share. They were coming up with new things to do and talk about. They had to get information from somewhere. There are lots of people that came together to talk about those ideas, to solve problems, and create new knowledge. And so this really is all about coming back to what libraries always were. We're not about books. We are still here to converse to share, learn, and create new knowledge. So that's what we're doing at Boise State at Albertson's Library. And another thing that libraries have always done is we're all about democratizing access. That can be access to a lot of different things. This, at one point, was considered really advanced technology. Imagine the power that this gave people to be able to record their thoughts and ideas. Anyone could do that. Anyone that had access to a pencil and paper could record their ideas and thoughts. Books used to be something that lived on chains and only were available to people in libraries and perhaps a select few, but now half of you could download a book onto your phone and sit here and read it while we're hanging out if you wanted to. Typewriters were another way that people could create new knowledge and information and share it with other people. So libraries have been about this for, since the beginning. We know that there's technology out there and that the power of putting it in the people's hands enhances the importance of that to society. So the next big jump that we're taking from typewriters is to 3D printers. This is a new form of technology that is something that is out of the reach of a good chunk of people. And so libraries are here to gain access, to uh, provide access for people who might not otherwise be able to access it. This is important on a university campus because we are creating potentially teachers of the future, and this is something that they're going to need to know how to use. Um, also, it's a great way for them to work through ideas and problem solve and work through failure and figure out that failure is not the end, it's just an, another hurdle to work over. We have a box of learning. Some people <laughs> that with 3D printers are familiar with what a box of learning might look like, but it's a bunch of messy pieces that were supposed to be successful prints and they ended up being some way that we learned more about design. So what we're doing is making connections on campus with our faculty, staff, 
students in the community beyond the university campus, for people who need access, who have a problem that they want to solve. Um, there's a bunch of students that we've worked with here in the audience today. The, they come, we meet people by holding events. We have workshops. This is a photo from our maker mixer that we held that was targeted towards faculty. I think we had some people in the audience attend. But we're meeting people to learn what their problems are. And then libraries are trying to solve that problem, collaborating with their users. So and so one of the things that came out of Maker Mixer, I want to say, is that there's a club on campus that we've started that's called the Creative Technology Association, and Ian, high five dude, one of the students in it, and that came out of this event that we had as well. So um, we're learning what their problems are and trying to figure out ways to solve it. And every conversation that we have generates a new collaboration where we find other like-minded individuals that help solve that problem together, and then voila, we have a new service in the library. So Ian, can I pick on you just for a second? He's learning uh, designing websites with our uh, library staff right now. It's something that we do. We manage the library website. And he's learning how to code that from scratch and design the Creative Technologies Association website. So we're partly mentoring him. Everybody in the club has some unique thing they want to solve. Uh, so true facilitation means shared ownership. This is an image from a green screen workshop. We have a green screen in the library, and it's very popular. We've had lots of people show up to workshops. They're using our media lab, so a media lab is another service that we're tr trying to provide. An audio lab is something that's coming soon. But every time we have conversations with people, they say, oh, you know what I really need, but I can't afford, or I need to figure out how to do this. Or there's this other department on campus that has this thing, but I'm not taking a class in that department, so I can't access it. We try to solve that problem. Exactly. So true facilitation is shared ownership. They get to design the space in collaboration with us, and then we get out of the way. So some of the students and faculty that we've worked with, I've got some examples here. This is an example of something that one of the students in the club, Scott Schmader, made. It's a musical instrument. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Blue Man Group, but it's something along the lines of the instruments that they play. So this is something that he took the initiative to build on his own. Um, and he's now the, actually the president of the Creative Technologies Association Club. The other thing we have in the library is a 3D printer. There are lots of 3D printers across campus uh, at Boise State. Ours is the only one that's available to anyone affiliated with the university. And this has led to some really awesome collaborations. The red and blue things are prototypes that students designed on their own. Some of them had never really used design software before. And they had problems or issues in their lives that they wanted to solve. One of them is part of a cell phone holder that fits in a cup holder. The other one fits on um, one of our students' bicycles, and he, he does triathlons. triathlons, and he puts food in there. Secret, for, secret prototype. Yes. Um, and then the bottom one was actually a collaboration with a faculty and a student. A faculty member um, gave a student the idea of, hey, we could create models that we can use to talk about in class. And again, a student that had never used any sort of design software before in his life created this kind of fantastically creepy ant model that we printed off for him. And these were, these were by no means really smooth prints. So there's learning that's happening on our end as well. Amy and I were not hired to be 3D printer librarians, but we have found ourselves in that scenario and are figuring out how to work through it. <laughs> also, two of those things didn't exist before this person invented them. And that's what we're seeing a lot of, are things that didn't exist before the student came up with the idea. Mm -hmm. So another thing that we're doing is we're holding events in the library. Where there's a series of workshops where we are trying to not only democratize access, but also the knowledge that is related to some of that equipment. So we had a Makey Makey build night. Um, we won some Makey Makey kits from Instructables. And this was fantastic. People, it was students, faculty, staff came together. We're hanging out. We're learning all the crazy things you can do with Makey Makey kits. Um, one of the students figured out how to use Scratch right there and then, had never used it before, and programmed a piano. So it's, it's fantastic. Play-Doh. Play yeah. that's right. So it's, it's really exciting to see these collaborations happening and everyone learning together and kind of removing the ego bit of, I'm the professor and I know what's right. Well, just because you're the professor doesn't mean that you don't have something to learn. Yeah, we're learning alongside For everybody. sure. So speaking of professors, this is uh, Professor Leslie Madsen Brooks who had submitted, she's holding uh, Tiny Lincoln and if anyone else has the theme song Tiny Elvis going through their head right now from Saturday Night Live, you're, you're cool. That I could, couldn't get out of my head the whole time it was going. Anyway, um, she submitted this for us to print it because it's something she wanted to use in class. Well, the file 
had some issues with it and we weren't able to print it right off the bat, but one of the students in the club figured out a way that we could print it. So again, a collaboration, a request from a faculty member that was made possible with the help of a student and us getting the 3D print running for them. This was a scan of Lincoln's face when he died that the Smithsonian made available online. Yes. And it was a huge file that the student had to manipulate to allow us to be able to print it. Thank you, Smithsonian. Yeah. It's an art installation from another student that we've worked with quite a great deal named Michael wanson -Reed. And just before I jump into talking about this, something I keep hearing from tech firm friends that run tech companies here in town is they want to hire people, they want to hire students and graduates that know how to make something. They don't necessarily care exactly what it is that they know how to make, but they've taken a project from start to finish and succeeded in making it. Michael started using some of our media labs in the library, and we started noticing he was there all the time, so we started working with him. How can we better design this? How can we work with you to help get you what you need? And then he started coming to our meetings at work, which was awesome. And he started teaching us how to use some new technology. This was his final thesis installation. And what you don't see pictured here are the many, many video poetry films that he created in the library as well. And they're gorgeous. And I, I invite you to look on Vimeo for his work. <laughs> so here's our summary. The future is. New librarians approach their work. We're facilitators of conversations. And then we're trying to document and share those conversations to make them more accessible for everybody. Um, we want to do this for the social good. Our absolute bottom line is to try to benefit the lives of our communities and take in all the community's needs. So we want to solve problems together with all of you, everybody that we serve. And that's what we see the future is. So we have a call to you which is go identify some problems that need to be solved in your communities and work with your librarians in order to do that, to help improve the lives of your community. Thank you. Thank you.